In this video, we're going to be starting the topic of multimedia. We're going to be looking at file size, bitmaps, and vector graphics. Let's take a look at the learning targets, what you should be able to do. You should be able to understand of how data for a bitmap image are encoded. You got to be familiar with these words or these terms, pixel, file header, image resolution, screen resolution, color depth, bit depth, which we will all be going over today. They want you to be able to perform calculations to estimate the file size for a bitmap image show understanding of the effects of changing elements of a bitmap image on the image quality and file size using those terms image resolution and color depth show understanding of how data for a vector graphic are encoded and with a vector graphic you got to know the terms drawing object property drawing list and then at the end they want you to justify the use of a bitmap image or vector graphic for a given task and the only way to do that is to fully understand all these other learning targets and if you can do that you'll be able to justify the use. So let's get started. Let's talk about bitmaps. A bitmap is a picture made up of pixels. It is a map of bits and the image is a 2D image and each pixel can be a color. Now a pixel is the smallest picture element that makes up an image. You cannot get smaller than a pixel. That's as small as you can go. Now in a bitmap image, each pixel has information that is stored, specifically what color the pixel will be. So it's a map of bits and the bits decide what color the pixel will be. But there's some more information that is stored about the entire bitmap image and not just the pixel. All the information about the image, such as the image resolution, all the information, it can be found in what is known as a file header. Now the file header is never seen by the user at all. Getting more, more in depth about the file header contents, information is stored for every single pixel. The header defines the resolution of the image, the number of pixels that make up the image, also known as the image resolution. So inside the file header, something that you never see in a picture is the image resolution. It knows the number of pixels that make up the image. It also has information stored for every single pixel that makes up that image. It contains the coding scheme for each pixel, which directly relates back to the color of that pixel. So here we have a green circle. Looks pretty smooth, looks pretty, uh, just pretty smooth, pretty round. But that's because I can't see the pixels. It's so small. If I make this picture larger, I start to see it becomes a little jagged. I can start to see the pixels and it's starting to look jagged. But in each of in each of these pixels, I have a bunch of white pixels. But here, where the circle is green, there's actually information that codes that pixel to be green. And when the file is loaded, my brain recognizes a shape such as a circle. If I zoom in or stretch out the picture even more, it becomes more distorted. And here I can start to really see the jaggedness. I can really start to see the pixels. This is not a well done image at all. A, a good image is one where a user cannot see the pixels. Here this looks very jagged, very rough. It's just, it's just been distorted. So when you're looking for a well-defined image, you need to make sure that the image resolution is high enough so the bigger it is, the more uh, smooth it will look. The image resolution for this one is very low, just as an example. Okay, so here's a picture of Mario. We can see there's information about each of these pixels. Each of these squares are a pixel. You may be saying, well, that's graph paper. Yeah, I know it's graph paper. It illustrates each pixel. And here, right here, we can see there are one, two, three, four, five red pixels that help make up the top of his hat and one, two, three light tan pixels, which make up his hand in this jumping animation. If we go through each row and we color code each pixel, we can get an image that we recognize, such as Mario. All right, so we need to be able to calculate the file size. Before we calculate the file size, there are some uh, words you need to be familiar with. Image resolution, so the number of pixels that make up an image. You take the number of total pixels horizontally and you take up the number of uh, total number of pixels vertically, you add them together. If, you, if it's a 19 by 15 image, you can simply multiply that, which will give you the total number of pixels. You also know, need to know screen resolution, number of pixels horizontal, horizontally and vertically that make up a screen. You are watching this on a screen. Your screen has screen resolution. It's the number of pixels that make up this image that you're seeing right now. And you need to know screen resolution if they tell you the image is uh, you know, the full screen. If it's a full screen size image, you need to know the screen resolution. You also need to know bit depth. It's the number of bits used to represent each pixel, which affects color depth. Color depth is the number of bits used 
to represent the colors in a pixel. Don't confuse these two. Bit depth is the number of bits used to represent each pixel. So we gotta have a bit depth of eight. And then color depth is the number of bits used to represent the colors in a pixel. So to find the color depth, you take the amount of, or the amount of colors available in an image, you do two to the power of the bit depth. So if you know the bit depth, you can find out the color depth, which, which is the amount of colors available. If the bit depth is eight bits, then the color depth would be two to the power of eight there would be 256 colors available to use in that bitmap image. Okay, so for a colored image, the bit depth is a minimum of one byte or eight bits per pixel. You need to know that. So if Cambridge says, okay, we have a colored image and they give you some information, you need to know that it's eight bits per pixel, which allows for 256 different colors. When we take pictures, we do them in what's called true colored images, which require a minimum of three bytes or 24 bits per pixel. This allows for more than 1 million colors available for each pixel. Now with more colors, we obviously increase the file size. So when you start increasing more and more colors, you're also increasing the file size, which we'll talk about. All right, so let's calculate the file size for a bitmap image. So we're gonna use this picture of Mario, and we need to know the image resolution and bit depth. That's what we need to know before we can calculate the file size. Now, pay close attention on your exam if it's asking for kilobytes or kibibytes, megabytes or mebibytes. It's gonna ask you for one or the other, and you have to be able to convert properly. So the formula for a bitmap image size, you take the image resolution, you multiply it by the bit depth, that is all. If you can do that, you then break it down into bytes and then into KB bytes, maybe bytes, as far as you need to. So let's take a look at this one. We need the image resolution. So in this picture, there are 19 rows of pixels by 21 columns of pixels. This gives us an image resolution of 399 pixels. This is an 8-bit image, which offers 256 different colors. We know the bit depth is 8, so we do 399 times 8, which is 3,192 bits. To convert that to bytes, I divide by 8 which would be the same 399 bytes. It is that simple. Now that's just going to bytes. We're gonna to need to go to something a little more. So let's take a look at another one. Remember, you need to know the image resolution and bit depth. That's what you're looking for. And pay close attention. Is it asking for kilobytes or kibibytes? Is it asking for megabytes or mebibytes? You need to know how to do all those conversions. Remember, the formula, image resolution times bit depth. So let's take a look at three questions. A logo is designed by a company. The final logo consists of 27 colors and is 500 pixels by 1400 pixels. Estimate the file size in Kibi bytes. Then it wants you to estimate the file size in kilobytes. And finally, it's explain why it's an estimation and not an exact. So let's go ahead, pause the video, get as far as you can on these problems, and we'll check back in with you in a few seconds. Okay, so let's see how far you got. So let's take a look. Uh, number one was a logo is designed by a company. Final logo consists of, consists of 27 colors and is 500 pixels by 1400 pixels. Estimate the file size in Kibi bytes. Okay, so with this one, you may be saying, well, I don't know what the bit depth is. It didn't give it to me. But can you figure out the bit depth for 27 colors? And the answer is, yes, you can. So let's go ahead and break down this problem step by step. You should have at least made it this far for the image resolution. We have 500 pixels by 1400 pixels. That gives us 700,000 pixels that we're working with. Now, let's talk about bit depth. What bit depth do we need to get a minimum of 27 colors? Well, if I try a bit depth of one, that gives me two colors, black and white. If I try a bit depth of two, that gives me four colors. A bit depth of three gives me eight. A bit depth of four gives me 16. A bit depth of five gives me 32 colors. Now, none of these say 27 exactly. The logo can consists of 27 colors. So you ask yourself this question, can I get 27 colors with 16 available colors? The answer is no. Can I get 27 colors if 32 colors are available? The answer is yes. So even with a bit depth of five, there's 32 colors available. This company only used 27. So now we know the bit depth is five. So I take 700,000 my image resolution multiplied by the bit depth, which is five, which comes out to 3.5 million bits. I divide by eight to get the bytes, which gives me 437,500 bytes. I can, multi I can divide that into even smaller. The first one was Kibi bytes, so I have to divide by 1,024, and that gives me 427.24 Kibi bytes. 
Part two said, okay, convert it to kilobytes. So we take 437,500 bytes. This time we divide by 1,000. We wind up with 437.5 kilobytes. And then part three said, why is it an estimation and not an exact? It's not an exact file size because remember, each bitmap image has a file header. The file header takes up space, but is not seen by the user. So this is why you're estimating the file size. If we actually took an image resolution like this with a bit depth of five, it would come out slightly higher than 427 kibibytes or higher than 437 kilobytes because of the file header. The file header takes up space, but is not seen by the user. Okay, so let's talk about increasing image quality and file size. If you want a high quality bitmap image with higher details, you need to increase the amount of colors. Doing this will increase the bit depth. Because you're getting higher details, you're going to need more colors. It may also increase the amount of pixels. More pixels with a higher number of bits per pixel will give you a better image, but also a higher file size. This means more bandwidth required to load the image, longer time transmitting a file, more storage space is required. And you're like, yeah, but one picture, what's the big deal? Well, if you're a photographer taking hundreds, if not thousands of pictures, uh, you know, during a month of various events, it, it's going to take up a lot of space very, very quickly. So a, a higher file size is not always necessary. It's really dependent upon the situation. So let's look at an example here. Here we have an image of a flower. Here we have a 24-bit uh, uh, depth which gives us a lot of colors. Here we have 256 colors, a bit depth of eight, and we can see that this is close to reality. If I look at these two images side by side, it's really, really hard for me to tell the difference. Now, you can see in the raindrops, there's a slight difference here, but in all actuality, will this picture get the job done? Of course it will, of course it will. Now, if I'm doing a professional photo shoot, I may give them, you know, the option and may go with this one. But if I'm just taking pictures for, you know, whatever, I really might want to go with a bit depth of eight because it's very close to, uh, to what we would actually see. Here's another one. So this was done by a professional uh, photographer. The one on the left is eight bits. The one on the right is 16 bits. And you can see that we have over here, there are some shading issues, but it looks really good. You can see the hair isn't, it looks darker here than it does here. You can see the background. We don't have a smooth transition, but other than that, it looks pretty, it looks pretty close. So if you're doing um, photography on the side, you might want to use 16 bits. If you're just taking photos of your kids and you're not really worried about the background or the shade of their hair color, you would do eight bits. All right, so bitmap fixed sharpness. So let's say you have an image that's pretty small, like the green circle, and we don't mean file size, we mean it's visually small, and you want to enlarge it. You wanna make it bigger so people can see it. The amount of pixels that make up that image does not change. So if you enlarge the picture, this can give you a loss in sharpness because you're not redefining the image resolution. So here we have a smiley face. This looks fine, looks good, but we wanna make it larger. Well, when you make it larger and stretch it out, the amount of pixels hasn't changed. And now we've lost sharpness. It's very blurry. The circle around the uh, smiley face is very jagged. Even the smile is jagged. It's not smooth. It just, it just does not look good. So this is why it's important. If you want to enlarge a bitmap image, you need to increase the amount of pixels it, so you don't lose sharpness. Now, let's talk about vector graphics. Vector graphics are images that use 2D points to describe lines, curves, and their properties. Uh, these can be scaled up and down, meaning we can make them larger or smaller without losing quality. If we want to blow them up and make them bigger, we can. It's, we're not going to lose sharpness. So here we have a vector, uh, an image of some type of ice cream soda. In a bitmap image, if we stretch this out, we can see we've lost quality, we've lost sharpness. But in a vector image, it has a formula that redraws everything and we don't lose any sharpness at all. Here's another one. Here's a vector file. Looks very, very smooth. And this was the original size. Here's the original bitmap file, the original size. When we enlarge it, 
we see that it loses some detail, starts to become a little blurry. Here's another one. So here's a vector image, and you can see a vector image looks nothing like what you actually see in real life. If we zoom in right here, at 125%, we haven't lost any sharpness. We can zoom in e even further right here at 350% of this small box right here, haven't lost any image quality. If we take something that is a real hamburger and we zoom in right here, we can see it becomes very blurry and not even sure what we're looking at. If we zoom in even farther over here, all we see are a bunch of pixels of green, yellow, and brown. Um, here, we haven't lost any sharpness. So you can think of this one, I'm a bitmap, very, uh, you know, lo loss of sharpness, very jagged. This one, I'm a vector, very nice and smooth. So that is the difference. So vector graphics, how do they work? Vector graphics are often used in CAD programs or where there is a drawing canvas on the screen. Vector graphics include a drawing list, which is included inside the header. So it has a header as well, and inside that header would be a drawing list. And the drawing list includes a drawing object, which is the geometric object that's going to be drawn on the screen. The header also includes the property, the attributes for each drawn object. So if we draw a circle, it needs to know the thickness of the line that draws a circle, the size of the circle, the line color that makes up the circle, and whether or not there is a fill color. Are we gonna fill in the circle or are we not gonna fill in the circle? The relative position of each object needs to be included. So if you're drawing a bunch of objects, it needs to know how close and the relative position of each object. That way when it scales it up or down, it can redraw it appropriately. Dimensions of the objects, they're not defined. The relative positions allow the image to be redrawn with no loss of quality. Vector images are often used when the image is not realistic like a bitmap. It needs to be resized or needs to be drawn to scale. Now when you're modifying photos, using photo editing like Photoshop bitmap images would be better than editing vector graphics. Because vector graphics you don't really need to edit because it can be resized, drawn to scale with no loss of quality. So if they said, hey, you're using a photo editing a program like Photoshop, what kind of uh, images should you edit? It would be bitmap images because vector graphics don't need to be edited because they can be redrawn through the drawing list which contains the drawing object, the property, the relative position of each object as well. So that's it for the first part of multimedia. Uh, make sure you have this done, come to class, and we'll dive in even deeper.